That was scary. Hello everybody, it's me, Prima Noy, and I'm back, and I know it's been a long time since I made a video. Uh, I've been on the move. I moved from Florida back to my home state of Illinois, uh, back to the corn, and back to the snow, which I actually do enjoy, but that didn't stop me from keeping tabs on what's going on in Star Citizen, uh, and I am here on the 3.0 PTU to bring you my view in coordination with Tactical Advanced Gaming. Uh, he'll have his own review you can go and check out. I will link it at the end. Uh, but right now I'm going to give you my take on three of the new ships that were just introduced. Well, two new ships uh, and a, the rework for the Cutlass Black. Uh, one thing that a lot of people have been waiting for. And we're going to finally get a chance to see it and see what the interior looks like. See how it feels and the new sleek and sexy uh, <clears throat> less than legitimate business ship. Uh, but we're also going to be looking at the Misk uh, Prospector here, uh, one of the new mining ships. We'll take a look inside of that. It looks pretty interesting, kind of like a weird repurposed uh, um, freelancer, it really looks like to me. We'll look at that. And then the ship that I've been waiting for for a while. Uh, I'm waiting for the sail because I think I might switch my Andromeda over to a Phoenix. Uh, but today we're going to be looking at the Aquila. Now, why don't we go ahead and start off with the rework? Uh, since it's long overdue, we've already seen many people look at the Cutlass Black. Uh, and I figure we'll look at the Drake Interplanetary ship ourselves here and see what they have changed already. You can tell the ship is a lot bigger, a lot beefier, and a lot meaner looking than its original incantation. The original kind of looked a little bit ramshackled, didn't it? It looked a little bit jury rigged, kind of like a. You know, like the Volkswagen bus of the ships, um, but a Volkswagen bus that you could fit big guns on. This one, on the other hand, is something new entirely, uh, including one of the things I noticed first off was the new port of the weapons here. You got two on top of the front struts right up here. You got two underneath, no longer a cannon underneath the nose. You've also still got your iconic turret, but it does seem like it has been moved a little bit. It is now more central to the ship than where it was, it felt. Uh, it was a little bit more far forward, which kind of made it feel a little bit awkward, especially when you were in it. Uh, if you've ever been in the, um, the turret gameplay for the uh, Drake Cutlass. Um, right now, it does have some pre weapons. I have not changed the loadouts. This is the default loadouts that they come with. Uh, these are subject to change, I will admit, but we're gonna see what it gives you if you get it now when 3.0 comes to everybody. All right. So first off, we've got this gun right here. It is a Badger Repeater. It is a size two, of course, or a size, yep, yeah, it's a size two gun on a size three gimbal. Now this can be upgraded to a Panther or any other size three that you want, or you can mount, of course, any size two or size one. Uh, size three is the maximum on it if you want it fixed, which I fly, because I have my Brushmaster 16,000. Uh, on the other side, of course, it's the same story, another Badger Repeater, size two. Now, if I can figure out what is on top of here, it is another badger. Okay, so, and it is, yes, on another size 3 gimbal. So you could essentially get four panthers, which is actually very impressive, much better than its original. So imagine that, four panthers, forward facing fixed, or you can have four badgers, four bulldogs, whatever you want, gimbaled. Uh, you've got four guns that you can bring to bear, either fixed or gimbaled if you want to downsize, uh, which is still pretty intimidating, uh, considering <clears throat> how some of the mechanics work in this game. Now, up at the very top, the tippy top top, the turret itself, if I can get closer and get it to tell me, there we go, it looks like it is a, ooh, a little fancy that. Alright, so the turret itself, now this will be really important if it comes down to where we can slave the turrets and use them uh, from the gunner seat or the pilot seat. This is a turret with two panther repeaters on it. So. In essence, I mean, it's a it's a turret, so it can mount size three guns. So any size three gun you want on there, any that I think the sawbuck is a size three. I'm not sure. You guys don't really quote at me on that. I don't keep track uh, so much of what each weapon is yet. I'm pretty sure as the game goes along, I'll learn because uh, I'll be getting more ships and I'll have more guns to keep track of. But that being said, it is two size threes. So in essence, you could have six Panthers forward fixed if you could slave that turret to the gunner to the uh, pilot. Um, We'll get back to that. This is actually a glitch. See, 
watch. Uh, the new mode is you hold down F and you bring up your interaction uh, icon here, um, and you can select what to do. This is how you activate stuff now in the game, including the doors in the hangar to uh, cycle the oxygen and all that to get in, to start up. You have to start up your ship now. You don't just, it doesn't just automatically turn on, which I do link is a, uh, bleh, sorry about that, I do think is a very, very good addition to the game. Uh, I've played DCS and everything like that. I've played some War Thunder planes with my joystick uh, and my throttle and my floor pedals. And I do like the whole thing like in d the DCS world, uh, Digital Combat Simulator. Which is an, a jet fighting game, for those of you that don't know. It's free on Steam. Not free to get more than just the first couple of planes you get, though. <laughs> you can spend up to about $2,000 for everything in the game. But it is very realistic. And in that realism, you actually have to turn on the generators. You have to turn on the power, turn on the engine, start it. Same thing here now. You have to turn on power, and you have to start up your, your ship. Which is interesting. I wonder if that'll also be implemented. I'm rambling here, but I'm hoping that'll also be implemented to where if somebody else comes in, you... you turn on your ship or you call your ship to a pad and while you're on your way somebody tries to go out there and snipe it they can't because you need a key that you have on your key ring or something like that to activate it so that would be a pretty cool uh, subject and it could make it very interesting for piracy uh, maybe to steal someone's ship you would need to have a special device that you know spoofs it and fools it into uh, letting you take it but no like I was saying though I was gonna show you this it's a glitch right now it so far is only a glitch I've seen in the hangar I haven't seen this glitch in the actual uh, persistent universe uh, or in Arena Commander, so not too worry about, worried about it, um, but it is something that hopefully uh, CIG fixes. It has been reported, uh, but once I close it, it disappears, and I think it's just because here it wants you to be able to see what's inside. Now, we're going to take a look at the new thrusters. Now, of course, the thrusters do rotate. They are on this uh, rotating gimbal here, So, and they do reciprocate. They do move as you fly, which is very interesting, and it looks really cool with the new body shape of the ship. Uh, the old one, I felt it looked kind of odd, like they were, bit, you know, bulkier than the actual ship itself, and they looked flimsy. Now they actually look a lot beefier. It matches the aesthetic of the ship, and it actually kind of looks like it would work in theory, uh, you know, the physics that are in, in the game. Uh, Sorry if I sound a little bit weird. Uh, it is cold here. I'm still getting used to it, because remember, I've lived in Florida since 2011. So I'm still getting used to these uh, below freezing temperatures. Uh, you've got the engine vectors, I always point those out. You've got missiles, top mounted missiles that I, from here, can't tell if they go inside the ship or not. Let's, let's see, oh, this is another feature I wanted to s show you. Uh, your mouse wheel, Bringing, uh, pulling your mouse wheel back, rolling it, the mouse wheel back will slow down your character. Rolling it forward will increase the speed that you move. And of course, shift is your sprint. Uh, and you see down there in the bottom left, um, you see your heart rate. If it goes up, it can actually affect your accuracy and other things. Um, you know, it's stuff like sneaking and everything like that. So it's pretty cool. You do have limited oxygen now. Uh, and you do have much more limited fuel. Uh, I will do another video maybe tomorrow showing the new flight mechanics of 3.0. So you guys can see what to expect when you get in and everyone gets full access to it. Uh, but yeah, it looks like the missiles are mounted on top. We've got some size twos, and I think it's all size twos, but a lot of them, 12 to be exact up there, and that's quite a missile payload. And for them to be size twos, I think they're stuffed inside, they're hidden until you activate them, they pop out and you, they fire. Pretty cool, I do think so. The landing struts also do look like they could hold up the weight a little bit better. I do even like some of the fine details. Now, I do run this on medium right now, uh, I can run it on high, uh, but the optimization does need a little bit of work. Do not worry. They are actually making that their top priority before it gets to you guys in the Persistent Universe. I mean, let me see. I can, maybe can turn it up to high for you guys uh, while I'm in the hangar. In the world, because they're also doing stress tests. Um, thank you, computer. Uh, yes. I would do very high, but... Because I do have a 1080 now in my computer. I have upgraded, uh, upgraded for Battlefront 2 to play that and everything else, so... It should be able to run it on very high, but the difference I've seen is not very. It's mostly, you know, shadows look a little bit more precise, and I'm not too worried about that, especially when I'm flying past things at, you know, th hundreds of meters per second. So, yeah, this is high. Everything still looks, and as you can see, the difference between medium is also very minuscule. It only looks like it maybe changes some uh, surface uh, specularities and stuff like that. Maybe some bump mass. That's it. I'm not, not much difference so anywho 
we're gonna go ahead and look inside enough of me rambling while we're outside here let us look inside our new palace black that is always so fun to just watch as it opens in front of you all right so first off we notice it is a little bit dark inside here um I don't think that's normal. Um, right now, there is a bug with the hangar. You spawn a ship. I actually had one happen with the uh, Aquila over here. It spawned it at an angle and in the air, and it had to drop down, and I had to kind of stand on the back of the landing struts to get it to level out. And I think the Drake Cutlass did it as well. It kind of dropped it from about mid-air here in the hangar, so it may have damaged it a little bit. But that also shows us that you can have some damage like this that you could possibly have people to repair in-game. So internal damage, damage models look like they are a thing. We got some sparking over here. Yeah, yeah. All right. So inside, as you can see, that glitch doesn't exist. There is a window here. It does look out. It does have a problem with the hangar, but it, once again, I think the hangar is just a separate entity. It's not the resistant universe. But it can see because it can see the Aquila out there through it, but it can't see the uh, walls. But as you see, we can hit the. We can even lock. You can, once you go into flight, you turn the signal, you can hit the lock so that people cannot open it from the inside or from the outside uh, unless you unlock it. Go ahead and open this. Eastside cargo bay. Also, you could really imagine if you were flying over a planet, you know, over a battlefield going on on ground combat, somebody grabs a machine gun and just, you know, you got door gunners here. You could throw grenades as fly real low or, you know, have your troops jump out. It's not that far of a drop, really. We're going to leave that open just for light's sake. In fact, we're going to go ahead and open this one just for the effect. There we go. Nice. And it does light it up in here a little bit, but not much. All right, let's go ahead and look inside here. Here is your command station. Now, here you have your beds. Uh, the toilet is gone in the cutlass right now. That is actually something people have been bitching about, which, you know, I kind of liked it because it was immersive. I mean, it's not necessary. I don't think they're going to make our characters have to use the bathroom. Uh, when they <laughs> see this leads me right here to believe that some of you who are just a fire extinguisher All right before we look at the command station. Oh, yeah, here's your weapons rack. Of course. That's in just about every ship nowadays All right, let's ah. Let's see how the turret looks A little bit of an animation error there all right now, of course, it is powered down, so we can't move, but... Oh, no. All right, so the turret's pretty standard. It's about the same as it used to be. <clears throat> I'm not too concerned about that. I mean, supposedly the turret gameplay is now uh, a lot better. So it is more accurate, it's more easy to control. Uh, I did. I was gonna say turrets used to be pretty easy if you used a control stick, a joystick. It was a lot more precise uh, with mouse. It was a really slippery, kind of jerk back and forth when you tried to find aim. So maybe they fixed that. Maybe mouse and keyboard controls on the turrets are now a thing. We will find that out later on. I'll see if uh, one of my friends can jump in this. Uh, maybe I'll have Taz come in here and be my gunner. Here is your command station. Now you've got your co-pilot seat, of course, and your pilot seat. Now. Here is where there is some concern from people. You can probably already see it from where I'm standing. And that is the view. Now, you can see down, I mean, but the struts do seem like they are a little bit thicker than they used to be. And the MFDs, uh, the uh, multi-purpose front displays, they do, or functional displays, they do take up a lot of real estate up front. Now, as you can see, the center reticule, this is where about center of your view is. Now, as you can see, it takes up a whole half of my screen here. So, I mean, it could be a little bit better once we get the uh, VR where you can look around while you're flying, but it does take up a lot of real estate. And that is something that can be a little bit um, worrisome when you're in a flight. Go ahead and jump out of this. The co-pilot seat, uh, I mean, I'm not too worried about the way the view is in the co-pilot seat. But, oh, see, look at that. Now, that is actually quite comfy. I actually like that. That feels good. I would love to fly 
with this so I could because you could see everything. Oh, this is really nice. This is a good. See, the co-pilot's got a really good view. I'm not sure how high the pilot seat goes up in conjunction to this. Um, the MFDs aren't obstructive at all, though, uh, considering it looks like it's one of those. If you wanted to look at your MFDs, you'd have to actually actively look down and control them. Um, I'm not entirely sure, though. I still don't see too much function for the co-pilot. I mean, other than maybe power levels, but the pilot can do that, too. You have, hot, you know, keybinds for that. To adjust certain power levels, so we'll see. But alrighty, you know what? Let's let's do this trooper top. Ah, oh. go go go! All right. Now let's go look at the prospector. We'll save the big boy for last because I'm very excited about the Aquila. Now the prospector. I don't know much about this ship. This is actually one that kind of surprised me. Apparently, it's been in the works. It's been presented, but I. Wasn't and then I guess I was still moving when it got announced and presented and everything like that. But yeah, this is the prospector. You got your thing of a bogger right here. I think it, yeah, mining laser. Oh, it's either a mining ship or a uh, salvage ship. I think it might be the salvage ship. Somebody's gonna correct me. This isn't for me to give you a lesson on what the ship is. The uh, website, if you go and look it up, which I will be putting the store page. Uh, the store page is in the description below, so you guys can go and check out the stats, uh, some of the matrices and the specifications of each ship uh, that I don't cover here. This is just basically to give you a look, a, a walk around. So if you want the full details of what it does, what it can mount, and everything like that, go ahead and feel free to click on those links below and actually take a look yourself, get your own opinion. I think these might be, yeah, these might be just bins, so I'm thinking mining or salvage. I think this might be both, because it could be easily be storage. This isn't fuel tanks, because you can see it looks like it's a... A mesh fabric around each so this wouldn't be holding any kind of liquid this would be holding material this is obviously probably yeah, salvage or mining uh, it's got huge intakes too which probably counterbalances this laser whatever it does either for cutting salvage or for cutting rock for mining um, anyway we're going to go ahead and look here you've got it looks like a size one guns on it for self-defense I mean nothing too major it's got a couple on both sides here uh, these are easily bearing laser cannons here. Um, I don't know what size those are, those, they, but they look tiny. Like They look like they could be held by my character. So I'm guessing these are the size ones. Size two might be generous. Um, but being as this is an industrial ship, I see it as being only for self, minor self-defense. Uh, just to kind of... It's, I don't even see it really much for self-defense. I mean, your biggest mission for this ship would probably be to run, to jump out of there if somebody comes after you. I don't know for sure what these things are. These are interesting. They look like they're maybe lights or scanners. It could be. It could be just lights, and I could be an idiot. I don't know. Got big engines here. I'm not sure. It looks like they might rotate. Yep, in fact, it does. I see gim uh, gimbals in there. Although it's not. Ooh, it's not necessarily attached, I don't think. Maybe it is. I just can't see that far up there. But yeah, it's one of those things. It, it rotates. So this is your main maneuvering thrusters, uh, your full propulsion, are your main thrusters, and then you got little maneuvering thrusters like right here. Be a nice placement of it. Yeah, it's got some big engines on it. Let's, can we even go in? Yeah, we can. <clears throat> what the hell? Is this... What is this? I guess this is just a maintenance hatch. Interesting, I haven't seen that. Yeah, I think it's just a maintenance hatch and storage hatch. That's interesting. Hmm. So this is... For those anybody else that doesn't know anything about this ship, we're going on this adventure together because this is interesting. Ah, there we go. Enter ship. Take a look. Ah. Oh, this is definitely a freelancer. Repurposed. Yep. 
here's your cooler this is where your maintenance is this is where all your engine would be so whatever it is this has got a huge power plant this is this thing's packing a lot of power usage everything's always sparking around me that's I think it's just me hey, you have maintenance panels your status here it's like yeah your bed it's got one bed that's easily a one-person craft Toilet. Yep. I left the water on. I kind of turned it off. Get your space toilet. Hey, let me out. There we go. Let's go ahead and look. At, okay then. And look at this uh, cockpit and sit in it. See. Can I? Hmm. Ooh. There we go. You have to be behind it. That's uh, uh, it's situational. Ooh. <laughs> That's where your radar and your displays are going to be there, and then you're going to have your main HUD here. But you do. Wow. I, this is an interesting view. This is huge. This is like the uh, Cartual. You just have this big dome of a windshield so you can see everything, which is going to be perfect for salvaging and mining so you can see everything around you. A little bit of view up there. Uh, it looks like some other displays that you could actually find information on. Ah, see, here you go. Closing the exterior. Of course, you can lock it and everything like that. Turn on the power. Yeah, you can turn on the Hello. power in the hangar. How can MISC help you today? Oh, that's a Systems nice computer. Alright, so yeah, bearing M3As. Okay, so that's the weapons that it's packing. Ooh. No displays down here. It's all to the, you know, it's all above you. So you just look up. And yep. Yeah. Stealth setting? It must be a stealth ship? Hmm, I don't know. And, let's see, I don't think you can change. Shield charge complete. Shield off. Shield on. Shield charging. Oh. I'm playing with stuff at this point. I'm sorry. So, okay. There are items. Goliath. On the form. I don't know if those are missiles? Huh. I'm not sure. Go ahead and just to, you know, save power and be conservative here. Let's go ahead and get up. This is your prospector. Now, for those of you, hopefully that was enough of a walkthrough, you can actually see how this can fly. I, I can see this being very comfortable to fly, though. Very open. This could be quite a ship for just an adventure, just flying around looking for stuff. You let me out, thank you. Alrighty. Exit ship. Now, let's go look at the third and final ship on our list here on the hangar floor. That is going to be our big daddy of them all, because me being a Constellation fan, uh, despite them still being in kind of a confusing place with the current meta, I am still saying that it's because everything has been really Arena Commander focused. Something for me. Like I said, they were up in the air and they dropped down. So... look here. I do love the steam though. Alrighty. Missiles. this oh all right so this is a bug a uh, pretty well-known bug 
There we go. Yeah, it fixes once you get onto the floor. It's when you're in the cargo holds, or the cargo floors, it does that. I don't know why. I think it's just because it's the particles and everything like that for the smoke. It's just bad, whatever. <clears throat> Let me go back here. Now, this is the Aquila. All right, we're going to have to turn that down. All right. Much better. Now, what I'm going to, we're looking at here, here's your Merlin fighter. Now, apparently, it's still with the Aquila, so the Aquila does have a snub fighter. So that is confirmed. The Aquila does have the same uh, defense. It just does not have the turret. Instead, it has the sensor array. Uh, but of course, also the Aquila will have the rover that would be down here. Um, I don't even know what that is. What is that thing? Uh, of course, here you got the living quarters. It is pretty much the exact same as the constellation, just slight color differences. I'll get to you in a minute, door. Once you get your beds back here for your crew, you got your lockers, your weapon mounts, your table and chairs. Look at that. We've got a table. Yay. Now we can play space chests in space. Now here's your crew station. Yeah, this is because it dropped from such a high place. Unfortunately. So we'll have to deal with the sparks and stuff, but it didn't damage it. These these aren't this thing shouldn't have turrets on it. This thing should have sensors. Yeah, I'm mostly paying the, the turrets. They're a little bit off center when it comes to the. Do I even have weapons on this, or is this just an observational thing? I can't really tell. Is it power on, power off? Tractable turret hides in the actual ship. Stop at doors. I'm thinking they're retractable, but there's nothing equipped to them. I could be wrong. I didn't see any weapons on it. All right, now you have your front seats. Now the it's it's pretty similar to your normal constellation, just a much much wider point of view. You can see a lot better. Let's go ahead and get in the pilot seat and see how it looks. Rabbitistics. I'm off center. This might be a hanger thing because I don't really see it doing this in the actual game. Alrighty. Yeah, this is actually a much better view. Uh, we've still got those things in front of us, these struts. People did complain about those when this thing was revealed uh, in the early videos. I don't see them being, for it being an exploration ship, I don't see it being too much of an issue. But for some people, it can be. People, some people want uh, to be able to see. A lot better, but let's go ahead. Power on. Welcome to Robert Space Industries. Enjoy the ride. System check. Collision alert. Bolt. <laughs> on the ground. Now I saw you can start the engines. Can we do Collision that? Alert. Bolt. Ah, uh, it's gonna keep going as collision alert. But yeah, it's pretty much standard. The way this. Ah, all right, we're gonna go ahead and turn that guy off. All right. Yeah, it's pretty much kind of the same as the Andromeda and the Taurus. I mean, okay then. It's pretty much uh, just the difference in the canopy. Uh, that nice big round one, big wide and open. Um, it's interesting. It does feel like a bigger ship with that canopy. It does. It seems like you have more space in here to me. Um, and flying with it in a multi crew kind of situation would be very interesting. I would love to actually try that out, which I think I'm going to try this week. Uh, get as many people as I can together. 
fill up my Andromeda. Maybe do that Friday with uh, since we have a big group of people coming on. <laughs> Ooh, pardon me. Oh, yeah, let's try the elevator. The elevator is always a pain in the ass with this game. And fill it up. Elevator seems to be stuck. Yeah, elevator stuck. All right. Um, there's gonna be because I'm not gonna use the cargo elevator. That would be just too fun. Let's just use the airlock. Ah, there we go. Now, of course, this does look like it does have the missiles. Yep. Ooh, right, come on, stop, stop twitching. Yeah, those are definitely missile launchers. So, I mean, the Aquila can arm itself much like the Andromeda, which is what makes it very interesting, and it's what makes it very hard to kind of pick between the models. Uh, because, see, I love... I want to use my Andromeda as a gunship. Mount on some, uh, you know, the, this... Revenant cannons, or even the new size 5 laser cannons onto it. Do a lot of damage with those big missile pods, and also have the two turrets to engage smaller targets when I have people with me. I mean, nothing wrong with that. The ship, I think, in the future will be able to fill its role beautifully. The thing about it is, I love the Andromeda for what it's packing. But I love the Aquila for just the way it looks and the more features it has. I mean, I love the new the canopy on the Aquila. I love that open feeling. I love that wide. And it looks like the Aquila has the same armament as the Andromeda. I mean, it has... Now, is that an Archimedes or a Merlin? That's a Merlin. It has the snub fighter. Yeah, it has the stuff fighter, it has the missile pods, it has the turrets, uh, obviously. I don't think there's anything mounted on them, and that's up. I think that's an imps. Uh, I think that's the size 4 laser. But, I mean, it's got the turrets. Just the turrets are internal. They retract in. I'll have to look. I think maybe the Andromeda will also be going to this model just with the pointy canopy. I am not sure. We will have to, I'll have to look into that, and I will give you guys uh, the information on that. Uh, with the next video or you guys can look it up yourself no problem with that if you'd like to because I'm actually because like I said I've been away for a while I've been busy moving and everything like that and getting readjusted so I've been kind of out of the loop and this is me coming back after 3.0 release and jumping into the PTU I got my invite so I am not incredibly versed on what the new features are uh, but that's what I'm doing this week before it goes to public uh, is trying to figure out and showcase what it's got so that I can give you guys an opinion and see show you guys what you can expect uh, and remember, I'm not the only one doing this. I am only doing this on behalf of uh, Tactical Advanced Gaming. Uh, don't forget to go check out his channel. He's going to have probably a more in-depth look at this. And he will also be doing a lot more content. Also, feel free to go to our website, which will be down below in the description. Uh, you can join our gaming community. And if you'd like, join our organization. We're always taking new people, new pilots, uh, and trying to create a fun world in Star Citizen once it finally releases with our organization. So feel free to apply. Uh, and get to know some like-minded pilots and spacefaring gamers as yourself. Uh, but anyway, that is it for now. Next time, I will probably review some of the ground vehicles, and we will give you some flight tests with these vehicles and others in 3.0 and give you a taste of what you can expect uh, here in 3.0 week, in the anniversary week. Um, also, be sure, if you're seeing this now, be sure to check out those sales over at robertspaceindustries.com and see if there's any that took your fancy, including some of the ones that are coming up. There will be a schedule there uh, on the main page. But once again, this is Prima Noyan for Tactical Advanced Gaming, signing off and saying, see you out there.